I'm Patrick Hill, Deputy Project Manager for NASA's Parker Solar Probe. I'd like to take you on a tour of the pioneering spacecraft designed, built, and soon to be operated by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. There are three main technologies on Parker Solar Probe that make this mission possible. And they all play an integral part in keeping the spacecraft and instruments safe, healthy, and operating at peak performance. The Thermal Protection System, or TPS, is an essential technology that enables Parker Solar Probe to get so close to the sun. During closest approach, the sun-facing side of the TPS will see temperatures around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, the spacecraft itself will be closer to room temperature around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything hides behind the shadow or umbra of the TPS, except for a few brave instruments. The field's electrical wave antennas and the sweep solar probe cup, both of which have their own heat shields. Like many spacecraft, Parker Solar Probe is powered by solar rays. There are two on each side of the spacecraft currently hidden beneath their protective covers. What's different about our solar rays is they must operate within the final 5% of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. That's too much energy for conventionally designed solar powered systems. The first thing we do is use the actuator motors to move the solar rays behind the umbra of the TPS such that only the leading edges are exposed to the Sun. That small amount of illuminated surface produces enough energy to power the spacecraft and all of the instruments. The spacecraft uses an innovative cooling system that circulates water throughout both the rays. The heated water is then transported to these large radiators hidden behind the TPS, which then radiates that heat out to deep space. Parker Solar Probe is the first spacecraft to use an actively water-cooled solar array system. During solar encounters, the sun itself blocks Parker Solar Probe from receiving commands from the Earth, and it must rely on its own autonomous systems to keep the spacecraft and science instruments safe. We place solar limb sensors all over the spacecraft to determine when it's receiving too much sunlight. Autonomy then determines how best to position the spacecraft by sending commands to the reaction wheels, which adjust the probe's position in space. Parker Solar Probe is one of the most autonomous spacecraft ever designed. There are many enabling technologies. The solar arrays are very important. The autonomy was very important. Um, one of the ones that was obviously also critical was the heat shield. Um, and developing the technology to actually protect the probe at the sun. That titanium truss was also specially designed for solar probe. It's actually a really neat piece. It's a, a welded titanium truss that's about four feet tall, but it only weighs about 50 pounds. And the key there is we're trying to minimize the conduction between the heat shield and the spacecraft. So you want to have as little stuff there as possible. The Parker Solar Probe heat shield is basically one giant sandwich panel. And a sandwich panel is a lot like a honeycomb panel you find in a traditional spacecraft or on airplanes. You have two outer face sheets and then you have a core. In this case, the two outer face sheets are carbon-carbon composite, which is a lot like the graphite epoxy you might find in your golf clubs. It's just been superheated. And then the inside is a carbon foam. So the Parker Solar Probe heat shield has a white coating that's on the sun-facing surface of this giant frisbee that's protecting the rest of the spacecraft. And that white coating was specially designed here at the lab uh, in collaboration with RED and the Space Department as well as the Whiting School at Johns Hopkins proper to actually work at the sun. This was specifically designed for solar probe. And the concept is basically you'd rather be in a white car in a hot day than a black car in a hot day. It's just that it just knocks down the heat that much more. And so it's helping us stay cool at the sun. The particles of the corona are very hot, like three million degrees. However, they're very dispersed. It's not all three million degrees everywhere. It's a little hard to visualize, but think about when you are baking cookies and you have your oven and you can stick your hand in and your hand doesn't burn up. But if you touch something, then you'd burn yourself. So similarly, when we're actually at the sun's corona, we're not getting that hot because there's just not as much there. So the temperature is actually lower than the overall temperature of the particles that are at the corona. When we're at closest approach, the front surface of the heat shield will be at about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The back surface of the heat shield will be about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. But then the spacecraft bus is basically sitting at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So the shield is actually really keeping everything very cool. And that's most of the stuff on the bus. Additionally, there are a couple of instruments that are hanging out off the truss, and they will be hot, like the heat shield, um, like SPC and fields. Those are brave instruments sticking out in the sun. 
but everything else will be kept at that nice temperature, 85 degrees, so they can be working properly and giving all that great science data that we're so excited about. After working on this for 10 years, it is really a pleasure to see it kind of actually coming to fruition. Uh, to be one small part of this huge engineering team that is making science dreams come true is just amazing. I can't wait to rewrite textbooks and change the way we look at the sun forever. Here we have a piece of the heat shield for Parker Solar Probe, which is a sandwich panel uh, made of carbon uh, that's like the graphite epoxy you might find in your golf clubs or your tennis rackets, some carbon foam, and then another piece of uh, carbon carbon on the back. It's very lightweight, as you can see. And here I've got a blowtorch, um, and I'm going to use it to get the front surface of this glowing hot. And then we'll have a nice uh, demonstrator come in and touch the back with his hand. So we'll, uh, let's get this started. You can start seeing it glowing red. The real heat shield gets up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're not going to do today. But we are going to get it to a couple of hundred degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going pretty good now. Curtis, why don't you touch the back surface of that? What does it feel like? Nice and cool, he says. Which is just how we like it, keeping the spacecraft cool.